Father Christmas, Santa Claus, St. Nick, does he really exist? Tradition has it that this man lives alone at the North Pole for most of the year, but on Christmas Eve he travels around the world leaving presents for good girls and boys in socks left by chimneys. Is this true? How could we prove it? How could we disprove it? Using maths. First of all, no known species of reindeer can fly. However, there are 300,000 species which have yet to be classified. While most of these are germs and small organisms, who's to say that one of them is not a flying reindeer? Father Christmas is said to visit the home of every good girl and boy in the world. Now, at a conservative estimate, there are 2 billion girls and boys in the world. However, if we're to assume that Father Christmas does not visit Hindus, Muslims or Buddhists, we're left with a much smaller number, merely 378 million children. On average, there are three and a half children per household. This means we have 91.9 million households to visit. Now we can assume, to make it easier for Father Christmas, that these are spread out evenly across the world. We can also assume that Father Christmas has 31 hours in which to deliver his presents. This is thanks to time zone changes, meaning that Christmas Eve for somebody travelling around the world is slightly longer than Christmas Eve for people staying still. However, this still leaves him with very little time to get the job done. He has to make 822.6 visits in one second. In fact, he has to arrive at your house, park on the roof, climb down the chimney, fill your stockings with presents, eat any eatables and drink any drinkables you may have left for him, climb back up the chimney, back into his sledge, all in less than one thousandth of a second. Now, assuming all the houses are equally spaced out, this means there are 75 and a half million miles to be travelled by Father Christmas. For Father Christmas to make all his deliveries in 31 hours, travelling 75 and a half million miles, he has to be travelling at an average speed of 650 miles per second. To put that in context, the fastest machine ever built by man was the Ulysses space probe, which travelled at 27.4 miles per second. The average reindeer can cover 15 miles in one hour. Now, the payload of the sleigh is also an important thing to take into account. Even assuming there is only one good child at each house Santa visits, and that each child is only given one small Lego set weighing approximately one kilo, the sleigh and its payload must weigh 321,300 tons. The average reindeer on land can pull 150 kilos. Even assuming that flying reindeer could pull 10 times as much, we would still need 214,200 flying reindeer to pull that sledge. All these additional reindeer add an extra weight, making the total sledge 353,430 tonnes in weight, not including Santa, who is traditionally depicted as rather stout. A sledge of this size and moving at these speeds will be subjected to an enormous amount of air resistance, much like a rocket re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, the first two reindeer will be subjected to 14.3 quintillion joules of energy and would burn up almost instantaneously. As a matter of fact, all 214,200 reindeer, the sledge, the presents and Father Christmas would all be destroyed within 4.26 thousandths of a second. In addition to this, we need to consider the forces that will be acting upon Father Christmas himself. In this sledge, he will be subjected to approximately 17,500 times the force of gravity. For a man who weighs at least 120 kilos, this equates to 2.1 tonnes of pressure. Despite this overwhelming evidence, some scientists claim that Father Christmas may still exist, working within a fifth or sixth dimension, or even using a time machine to help him with his travels. All I can say is, if Father Christmas does exist, he's either a superhero or a quantum physicist. Probably both.